Uh, Madam Motion, items for presentation and discussion. Uh, the first item is a utility assistance with America, the, uh, has to do with the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA funding. Director Landis, good afternoon. Thank you. I've asked Rebecca McCurdy, our assistant or, uh, finance director, to join us too, just because she manages the utility accounts more closely and has been working with this program. So, just to introduce the item, uh, we when we began discussing what we were going to do with our ARPA funding, uh, we had talked about the potential of using it for utility assistance. And at the time, the recommendation from um, outside resources was don't use it towards uh, programming that's already being funded through other resources. Um, and and they there were lots of other resources distributed through lots of different agencies, one of them being um, KHRC, and that's what enacted this program, um, which uh, a program, which when it was completed, led to us having a need for a few of our utility customers. And I might just let Rebecca kind of give you a rundown on that program and then our, our um, the situation that we're in and we're asking for some assistance with. Okay. And Director Land has covered a lot of it, but... Um... So Kira, which stands for Kansas Emergency Rental Assistance Program, just for those listening, you don't have the memo maybe in front of you. Um, so it was set up by the state and it helps um, individuals all over the state, not just in the city of Ottawa. But the city of Ottawa, um, on behalf of our customers, we did receive $108,329 in assistance during 21, 22. So um, they did give a lot of assistance, but um, as that program closed out, there were people still on the waiting list, people still um, anticipating um, assistance and who were kind of told they would, they were qualified that did not end up getting assistance. And that's kind of where we're at here. So there's seven utility accounts that we're talking about here. And the request is not just for some ARPA funds, but also for approval to waive late fees that were only accumulated because of waiting for the assistance. So with that program, sorry, with our request then is just to be able to bring those accounts up to a current balance as of the end of December. What Rebecca has been able to do is work with them to, to try to get them onto a regular payment cycle for current payments, but because they couldn't make payments during the time they were being considered, it really put them behind. And, and we have a variety of cases. Some are very small, some of them larger um, I think our largest amount is well, um, 1500 probably. Around for 1500 like one possibly. Account. Yeah. Um, um, where's so the say, I mean, a lot of the times with this assistance programs, they would wait anywhere from two to six months to get assistance. And they were eligible for multiple, multiple months of assistance, but you were told when you were waiting to not make payments because that might ruin your eligibility. And so... Obviously, we don't let that normally occur. We don't let six months go by with no payment on an account. But in this case, we were getting these pre-approval letters from this organization saying, we will budge on this account. And so, and making regular checks-ins with the customers to ensure they were still living there, et cetera. Um, yep. So the other item is that these customers are customers that had been approved through their qualification process. These are not just customers that wouldn't have otherwise qualified um, for assistance of some sort. So they are, they've kind of already run through that approval process, something that we would ask for, for any type of um, outside assistance or even an internal assistance program. So our request is that you consider um, allocating ARPA funds in the amount of $4,872.75 towards these delinquent accounts, which would bring them to a current status as of December. And then we're working with them to keep their accounts current beyond that point. Um, I think I mentioned to you last week that we have not shut any of these individuals off that are on our waiting list or this list now, just um, in anticipation of having this discussion. Um, but then if you would decide not to, we would want to continue probably trying to provide some sort of a payment plan with them. But for some of these amounts, it might take a significant amount of time to get caught up on their accounts if they're paying something plus their current bill every month. So it wouldn't be your typical repayment plan. It would be something that would take much a much longer period of time. I'm confused how the housing assistance of the state 
uh, how does that, how that went to pay rents for people, the landlords? So it actually went towards rent, utilities, and even internet coverage. Okay. I mean, the idea was okay. to help people stay safely sheltered in place. Okay. So we can't use both the Kansas money and the ARPA funds for this. We have to use ARPA money for it. So their funding, um, unfortunately, it, they received a lot of funding, but the demand and the need across the entire state was much larger than they anticipated. And so they just, they ran out of funds. Yeah. So these, so as many people as could be funded by that program have been funded. These are just those, our few customers that got caught, caught towards the end of the program. In the queue, but didn't get In the covered. queue, but didn't get covered. Yes, thank you. Okay, so you indicated that this was seven accounts, mm -hmm. delinquent accounts. Um, any idea how many citizens actually live at these locations, roughly? Um, I mean, I have grown to know these people pretty closely. Mm -hmm. um, Rough number? There are some families with multiple children. Um, let's see. It's probably like... I would say there are at least families of, let's see, maybe 25, 30 people. Thank you. Got to take this off. I think that our request would be for, if you, if you really need to take this to a regular meeting to vote on it, that would be fine. But I think in all the other cases, um, we've done some sort of just a, consent type approval uh, when we're dealing with ARPA funding. And so it's really what you're most comfortable with here and how you'd like to proceed. Do you have another suggestion? I'm fine with approving it today. The next meeting is not until the 15th. I don't know how that affects the timing on you guys. You know? uh, I, I think if you just give us the heads on by consensus, I generally do these things administratively, but this was a little bit out of the ordinary. And that's why um, I wanted to bring it back to you. Commissioner, are you okay with giving them the head nod? Yeah. I think you have consensus. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. All right. Got me move us on. Actually, we're going to take a little time here. Blaine, you want to come on up? Brian, you want to come on up? Do a little introduction here. Well, a little suspense, Mr. Mayor, if that's okay. I want to um, start by saying um, a, a big thank you to the community. Uh, we've gone through this process over the last several months of uh, interviewing and trying to select a new city manager for the city of Ottawa. Uh, and um, we had uh, started out with 26 applicants from several states, including Canada. So we had an international search. Uh, and uh, and you all worked with SGR, the city's consultant, to help narrow that uh, field down, and and that culminated uh, last week after a process of video interviews and questionnaires being answered with a present series of presentations to the commission on what a first year might look like with each of your finalists, and then a public reception where the public had to come and give us input on the candidates, and then interview panels the next day uh, featuring senior leadership staff here at the city, um, a citizens panel. And uh, and obviously you all providing interviews as well. And I'm uh, pleased to announce that after that process, um, our finalist has uh, has risen to the top. And based on uh, consensus from the governing body, we're here today to introduce Brian Silcott, uh, former city administrator in Goddard, and uh, before that uh, Osage City and the city of Sterling. Uh, Brian is a, a Buford Watson Award winner, uh, which is the award given to. Um, the, the person who exemplifies the best in, in city administration and city management across the state. Our current city manager, Richard Ninesett, is also a Buford Watson Award winner. It's about as good as you can get in terms of Kansas municipal management. Uh, and so it's my honor to uh, introduce Brian Silcott uh, to the, the public on behalf of the governing body to say thank you to all who helped uh, in this process uh, and to uh, welcome Brian uh, to the city of Ottawa. Thank you. Welcome, oh, Brad. Thank you. Thank you, Commission and uh, fellow uh, department heads. Um, I felt welcome throughout, and I know, um, I know, and I'm familiar with the other finalists, and everyone felt 
welcome not only by the commission and the department heads, but the community as a whole. And uh, usually when you have community meet and greets and such, it, there's some uh, social anxiety there just because you're you're seeing so much. But both my, my wife, Mary Elizabeth, and I felt very welcome by the community as a whole and are excited to uh, to make Ottawa our home. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, we do have the matter of approving the contract for your next city manager. I will point out, as, as uh, Richard reminds us, he is the city manager until March 31st. That is the date he gave us. And uh, I, I want to say that is a testament to the character of your current city manager, too, that he gave us that much lead time to go through this process and to find a, a qualified successor. Uh, and so we have been able to do that um, per, uh, per the desire expressed by the commission. And then uh, negotiations with Mr. Silcott, he has agreed to come on board following uh, Richard's last day. Uh, and so we will have a kind of a seamless transition uh, from current to next city manager, uh, which is a, a luxury that a lot of communities don't have. Um, and we're fortunate to have these two gentlemen helping to make sure there's no gap uh, in that service. But uh, we've reviewed the terms of the contract um, in terms of uh, the city's HR department. And with Brian, they are consistent with the consensus um, that you all discussed, uh, but we do need a public vote on that contract that needs to be done in the in with the public watching. And so uh, I would be happy to stand for any questions you may have about the contract um, that has been negotiated. And of course, those documents are always public documents after they're approved by the commission as well. So happy to discuss that or take any questions you have on on that. I have to admit it was an exhaustive process, but uh, not only tiring because all the things we had to read so much about everybody. I mean, we, I feel like I know more about you than you know about you, <laughs> but it was the right way to do it. This is a very, very important position to have in our community. Uh, and I, yeah, like, like you said, I appreciate the community's help and, and bringing input as well, because that was critical as well. We had good turnout, and so I'm really pleased with all that. So we need a motion. I will make a motion. We approve the contract as agreed upon. Second that motion. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're excited. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. It's called the franchise tag on you now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that'll move us on to comments by our city manager. I have none. Comments by city commissioners, Commissioner Graves. No comment. Commissioner Kaler. Um, I want to thank the citizens that were a part of the um, city manager um, planning and the interviews, um, those that came out to the uh, the reception. Um, it, it was a good process. So thank you, citizen. Citizen involvement is critical, and we appreciate and I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Clay. Uh, I will ditto Commissioner Kaler and uh, Mayor Pro Tim Skidmore. And it was a hiring process. There was a I did more reading in that than I've probably done in a long time. Uh, don't tell my mom the librarian. Um, <laughs> but no, it was a, a great process. I was really excited to be a part of it. And I think the community really showed up and I think kind of put their best foot forward showing how involved they are um, in a lot of things in the community. So thank everyone who was a part of that um, and kind of supported us through that as well. Thank you. Mayor Brooke, I'm just kidding. Can't say anything. That's good. <clears throat> Um, comments by the mayor. I have just a couple things. Uh, I too want to also once again thank Brian. We'll see you in about three weeks, hopefully. Um, I also want to thank the commission. You know, we uh, we spent a lot of time, more time than usual together in the last three or four months going over this, and uh, there was a lot of great discussion, quite honestly. We spent a lot of time together. Um, you would think after a while it would uh, wear on us, um, and I don't really think it did. I think uh, be because of the relationship that we have as a commission, I think we worked well together, and I think we hopefully end up made the uh, end up made the right decision for our community, along with our community involvement uh, between you know all the folks that did show up and all the folks that drove uh, the the applicants around, and certainly um, to the uh, uh, department heads that spent a lot of time with them too. So thank everybody. I also want to remind everybody. I believe we set up the budget retreat for next Monday after sitting or after our commission meeting. Okay. Other than that, just a couple of announcements. Our study session is next Monday, 4 p.m. here. And then March 16th, we have the retirement reception for our city manager, Richard Neinstead, at 2 to 4 in the commission chambers. Anything else? You forgot his comment. What comment? Yeah, commission. 
Did you, you have any? Oh, you didn't have any? Oh, okay. Don't worry. Do you have any other comments now that we've made I, I know. I, I've been so used to him talking. I thought he could. Okay. My fault. Oh, she's like, no. Sure. I just wanted to give you a chance to shine. Okay. All right. Any other, anything else yeah. before the commission this evening? We'll adjourn.